on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Nishit Jalan from Access Capital Limited. Thank you, and over to you, Mr. Jalan. Uh, thank you, Michelle. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Q2 FY23 Result Conference Call of Endurance Technologies. Uh, from the management team, we have with us uh, Mr. Anurang Jain, Managing Director, Mr. Ramesh Gehani, Director and COO, Mr. Masimo Venuti, Director and CEO, Endurance Overseas, Mr. Satyaji Pre, Director and Group CFO, and Mr. Raj Mundra, Treasurer and Head Investor Relations. I will now hand over the call to Mr. Jain for his opening remarks, post which we can uh, have the Q&A session. Uh, over to you, Mr. Jain. Thank you, uh, and good morning to everybody. I would like to share details of how we have done in the second quarter of this financial year. In India, in the second quarter of FI23, as per the CM data, the two-wheeler industry sales grew by 7.35% percent compared to quarter two of the previous financial year. Scooters grew by 15.78 per percent and motorcycles grew by 5.62 percent. The automotive industry in India had a growth of 12 percent. In our overseas operations in quarter two of this financial year, the EU and UK markets saw an increase of 0.4 percent in the volume passenger uh, in, in the volume of passenger cars sold, while our European sales grew by 25.9% in euro terms. I will now brief you on the financials of the second quarter of FI23. During quarter two of this financial year, as compared to previous year's same quarter, a consolidated total net, net income grew by 25% from rupees 18,957.5 million to rupees 23,690.6 million. Consolidated EBITDA grew from rupees 2,681.9 million to rupees 2,800.2 million. Consolidated EBITDA margin was at 11.8%. The profit after tax degrew from rupees 1,333 million in quarter 2 of 520 to rupees 1314.9 million in quarter two of this financial year, and the pact was at 5.6%. This included the income of the Maraj PSI scheme incentive of rupees 284.61 million. There was no consolidated net debt, and company had a positive cash flow of rupees 2838 million. During quarter two, a standalone total income grew by 26.9% from Rs. 15,057 million to Rs. 19,113 million. Stand alone EBITDA grew from Rs. 2,170 million to Rs. 2,377.4 million with an EBITDA margin of 12.4%. Standalone profit after tax grew from rupees 1223.6 million in quarter two of FI22 to rupees 1312.7 million in quarter two of this financial year. And the pack was at 6.9%. This included the income of the Maraj PSI scheme incentive of rupees 284.61 million would like to mention that endurance is focused in both its Indian and European operations for a profitable growth and on growing higher than the industry growth. The detailed financials are available with the stock exchanges and on the endurance website. I would like to now share certain key points till quarter two, till quarter two of this financial year, FI23. Uh, in quarter two of FI23, 80.7 percent of consolidated total income, including other income, came from Indian operations, and the balance, 19.3 percent, came from our European operations. In India, till date uh, of this financial year, rupees 6,928 million of new business has been won from OEMs other than Bajaj Auto, which included HMSI, which is Honda Two Wheelers, Hero Motocop, Ather Energy. Hero Electric and Tata Motors. 
I would also like to mention that we have rupees 22,822 million worth of requests for, for ports from OEMs. Our consolidated net worth is now in excess of rupees 40 billion. Our customers recognize us as a trusted and capable partner in the value chain in terms of both technical and financial strength. The electronics vehicle market continues to offer significant opportunity for growth to the auto component industry. It is estimated that the Indian EV market will touch rupees 150 billion by 2030. Therefore, at Endurance, we have taken a major step forward to harness this opportunity by executing a shared subscription and purchase agreement for acquiring 100% of equity share capital of Maxwell Energy Systems Private Limited in a phased manner. We have already concluded acquisition of the first 51% stake in Maxwell. Maxwell, as you all know, is in the business of advanced electronics, particularly in the battery management system or the BMS for automobile, EVs, and battery packs. We plan to leverage Maxwell's deep technical ex expertise and its BMS deployment experience in India and Europe. We are offering our products to multiple new clients, including Indian and overseas automotive OEMs and manufacturers of battery packs. We have already started supplies to Hero Motocorp for their new EV, which was launched in October. With the existing current book, uh, with, with the existing order book, the order pipeline, the technical capabilities and synergies between Endurance and Maxwell, we are confident of achieving our goals in the embedded electronic space. As you are aware, we have added a high technology new product, which is the drive shaft. Drive shaft is a proprietary product and an EV agnostic product in an automotive application. Uh, a drive shaft transforms the torque generated from an engine through its transmission to the wheels. The application is for three wheelers and four wheelers, including some light commercial vehicles. The launch of the drive shaft has opened an additional revenue stream in the transmission segment for Endurance and will lead to a significant business growth opportunity for Endurance in the future. We have won orders from Mahindra and TBS and commercial supplies have started to bajaj from July 22 onwards. To help overseas operations to grow in the European two-wheeler component profitable aftermarket business, we have acquired an Italian company, Freno Technica, in July 22. This company is involved in the business of friction materials and components for braking systems like brake pads for two-wheelers. In 2021, they had a sales turnover of 3.6 million, million euro with an EBITDA margin of 1 million euro. So it's a highly profitable business. They have a renowned brand name called Brenta in the aftermarket and replacement business. With this acquisition and acquisition of the two Italian companies, namely Grimeca and Adler in 2020, we want to create a center of excellence in Italy and grow in the premium components in the two-wheeler segment. This acquisition gives growth opportunities to the endurance group in the European aftermarket business, as well as it provides access to in-depth know-how for process technologies of friction materials, especially for brake applications. We are looking at more such acquisitions. I would like to mention that Endurance is focusing on a more value add and a profit product mix in its future business, which includes braking, suspension, advanced electronics, and aluminum casting supplies to two and three wheeler OEMs and new startups. 200 CC plus motorcycle brakes and clutch assemblies with help of our acquisition of Adler and Grimeca in, in Italy in the year 2020. The 200 CC plus motorcycle brakes business has already started last year and the 200 cc plus motorcycles clutch business, which is your new assistance slip clutches for the high-end bikes will start in quarter one of the next financial year. The other product mix focus areas are the paper-based clutch assemblies, replacing the fog-based clutch assemblies for motorcycles to get a better value add. Continuous variable transmissions, automatic clutch for scooters with Hero Motor Pop. We are at an advanced stage of testing and we expect to start supplies from the next financial year. This is a bit late, but we We'll start the supplies with them. Uh, we will also increase the anti-lock brake systems or the ABS business for 150cc plus motorcycles with a collaboration with Beijing West Industries. We've already started supplies to Bajaj Auto and Royal Enfield and are engaged with other OEMs for winning new ABS business. We are increasing the business of the 200cc plus, plus motorcycle inverted front forks and adjustable rear motor shock absorbers. This is with the help of our collaboration partners, PT and AG. We are working with KTM to increase supply of both on-road and also start with off-road motorcycle higher technology, inverted front forks, and rear shock absorbers. 
and we have already made a three-year business plan for this. We have also started supplies of inverted front forks to HMSI or Honda two-wheelers in India, and one orders for inverted front forks for three of Hero Motor Corp's new platforms, vehicle platforms, and are also engaged with other OEMs on the inverted front fork new business. This is indeed a fast-growing business for endurance. We're also focusing on fully finished machine castings as compared to raw casting and semi-finished castings for all the two, three, and four-wheeler OEMs. As the disc brake assembly business is growing with addition of Bajaj, TBS, Royal Enfield, Yamaha, Hero Motor Corp, and Aether Energy, as well as HMSI new business wins, our second plant at Valor Aurangabad has been set up with, with a high increase in volumes and has already started operations. As you are aware, the supply of two-wheeler ABS assemblies to Bajaj had started in the last week of September 2021. ABS assemblies to Royal Enfield started from February 2022 onwards. You may be aware the competition is mainly from Bosch, which controls the major market share in the Indian ABS two-wheeler market, which requires approximately 3 to 3.5 million ABS assemblies per annum. We are now in the process of even uh, getting our dual-channel ABS cleared by the end of this calendar year. And we are scaling up additional assembly lines for adding an addition of 200,000 ABS assemblies per annum to our existing 400,000 ABS assemblies per annum, which will give us a total capacity of 600,000 ABS assemblies per annum. We are also further planning to increase these volumes to 1.2 million ABS assemblies per annum by the second half of 2024. So this is a very good growth opportunity for us. We are also focused on supply of products for EV two and three wheelers. We have started supplies for brake assemblies, suspensions, and aluminium castings for electric scooter and three wheeler. After the acquisition of Maxwell, we are also supplying the battery management system for two wheeler EVs and battery pack makers. Our focus is to supply our EV products to two and three wheeler OEMs, both existing and new. In this financial year, we have won rupees 2,168 million of new business for EVs till quarter two of this financial year. All this business uh, has been planned to start with this financial year or early next year and should reach peak volumes by the end of FY24. The total business win for electric vehicles is today at 4,891 million till date. This does not include a business which we just won a couple of days ago from Zero Electric, which is about a 1,200 million rupee business for both the BMS and suspension, and uh, this business should start by early ne next year. So, so this actually takes our business win for EV uh, vehicles to now slightly more than 6,000 million till date. We are also focusing on the e-bicycles business, especially for suspension, battery management system, and brakes. This is both for our Indian OEMs and exports. Also due to increased orders from Bajaj, Yamaha, India, TBS, and Hero Electric, we've added a new plant at Chakran to help increase supplies from 240,000 alloy wheels a month to 380,000 alloy wheels a month. This plant has already started operation in July 22, and the peak volumes uh, should be done by next month. Uh, and the supplies to TBS has also started in July 2022. As far as Europe is concerned, till date of this financial year, we have we have now have, we have won 42 million euro of business mainly from Porsche, Daimler, and Stellantis. As you know, we had won 70 million euro of business last year, and this year till date it's 42 million euro. So both India and Europe are really aggressive going after new business. You know, so so this is a very very good sign for us what we are seeing in the last two years, and the trust with with our customers. I would also like to point out that endurance, both in India and Europe, is actively pursuing its focus on gaining access to new technologies and focusing on new product organic and inorganic growth. As I mentioned earlier also, endurance has already entered two backward integration product areas, which are import substitutes also. First is the aluminum forging acid clamp business, which is with a collaboration with FG and Eclipse. We've already started supply since April 22 for both Bajaj as well as for exports. We have recently won an order also from Hero Motor Corp for a different application of an upper bracket aluminum forging, which will also start by next year. So the aluminum forging itself can become a segment and it's a huge opportunity for growth for us. 
The second product is, of course, the biosteel weight hoses for ABS applications for mid and iron bikes. These supplies have already started. So both these above, both these projects, I would say, are helping us already in our, in our, to make higher profit margins in, in these businesses of inverted front forks and also for ABS. In the first half of this financial year, our aftermarket sales grew 16.2% from Rs. 1,727 million in the previous year to Rs. 2,006 million in the first half of this financial year. We are exporting our aftermarket parts to 31 countries and we are adding four more countries in this year which are Rwanda, Burundi, Brazil and Vietnam. So aftermarket sales growth is a very large focus for us. Uh, and, and this will continue to be like that. In the first half of this financial year, the export sales for India standalone business decreased by 8.4% from rupees 878.56 million in the previous year to rupees 804.91 million in the past in the first half of this financial year. This major impact was due to the lower orders of aluminium diecasting exports to the European OEM. That's the main reason. But I think slowly it's coming back. We are getting new orders also from European OEM for castings. So the future looks quite good, actually. We are, I'm, I'm also, we are also extremely happy to inform you that Endurance has been judged as one of India's best managed companies based on De Deloitte's Best Managed Companies 2022 program. On the environment front, I would especially like to mention that Endurance is striving to be carbon neutral in its plants by effective use of solar power and wind power, creating carbon sinks by driving tree plantations and thereby creating dense forests, and driving use of natural gas and LPG in place of electric power and furnace oil. I'm happy to tell you that the use of furnace oil has been completely stopped now at, at, at Endurance. We are also focusing on lowering hazardous waste generation and to achieve zero waste to landfill. At Endurance, it will be our continuous endeavor to grow through organic and inorganic growth with a focus on technology upgradation, quality improvement, cost, and environment, health, and safety. We will do our best to fulfill all our stakeholder expectations by following our five values of customer centricity, integrity, transparency, teamwork, and innovation. We at, we at Endurance have a very positive outlook based on our large new business win in the last two years, including for electric vehicles, both in India and Europe. With these opening remarks, I would like to invite questions from, from, from all of you. We also have the Maxwell founder and CEO, Mr. Akhil Aryan, on the call to answer any of the questions you may have on Maxwell. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may please press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question B, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Aditya Jhawar from Investec. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my first question is on India business. Uh, you know, if you can help us understand the breakup of the 7 billion order win uh, in this year. Uh, and also, you know, you indicated that the cumulative order wins for EV is about 6 billion. Is it including Bajaj uh, or excluding? If you can include Bajaj number, that will be great. And a related question is that any breakthrough into new age uh, OEMs, uh, you know, for EVs in India? Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure, sure. So if you see the 7 billion order, which I mentioned is actually uh, 6.9 6 billion. Uh, this, this, the breakup is, it is from HMCL for, for castings. It is from HMSI for, uh, for the rear shock absorbers and front shock absorbers. It's from Tata Motors for the high-end machine castings. It's from Hero Electric for alloy wheels. I have not counted the recent order of the BMS and suspension. That's a 1,200 rupee million order. That I have not counted in this uh, 692, I mean 6.92 billion. Then we have Ether Energy for the battery box housings, uh, which are there. Uh, then we have orders, uh, okay, we have a lot of orders from Tata Motors, Hero Motor Corp, Hero Electric, HMSI, uh, 
but but the, uh, we also have from Yamaha uh, that there's a large order for their suspension, uh, which we have just got. It's a KO KO by it's a B six ninety three model. Uh, from TVS, we have got brakes orders, very large brake orders for the new NN360, and then we have orders from Royal Enfield also for for their for for castings. Uh, so basically, what I would say, the see, see, the best part is that in this order, 80% of the business is new business, and replacement is 20%. You know, so 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 that's the good part, and of course, this 6.9 billion doesn't include the 1.2 billion which we got uh, from Hero Electric just two two days ago. Okay, uh, so then you know, you know the like break up of the figures, which normally, I, but this, but basically, it's a combination of suspension, braking, and castings, yeah. and basically. It was a breakup. I'll, I'll have to add up the figures to give you the differentiation. But the customers mainly are, you know, HMSI, Hero Motor Corp, Royal Enfield. Uh, there are also Mahindra Electric. There's TBS. There, there, there's Ather Energy. So, so then there's Tata Motors and Suzuki Two Wheelers. Fair enough. And you know, the second part of the question was on, you know, uh, can we give us a EV order book including Bajaj? Yeah, so EV order book now, uh, which is now the 6 billion, includes 1 point. So in this figure of 6 billion, you have Bajaj of 1.24 for the two for the two wheelers and three wheelers, scooters and three wheelers. But the other main players in this is, is you know, Aether, there's Hero Electric, there is Mahindra Electric, there is a company called Bounce. And uh, as we speak, we are engaged with all these new big companies uh, which, which are there in the market, you know, and we hope to give you some more good news in the next call which I have, because we are just going after new business and of course the EV business, you know, basically for braking, for suspension, for castings, and for battery management systems as of now. Okay, yeah, uh, all the best for that. Uh, my second question is uh, on on the European business. Now there are two things to this. Number one is that how have been the customers, you know, reacting to price increase? By when should we, uh, you know, see that the customers agree for higher energy uh, cost? And the second is how is the production schedule uh, for customer looking like, uh, you know, the in the next couple of months? So I will request uh, Mr. Benuti, our director and CEO, to answer that question. Okay. Yes. The first, uh, the first question regarding the energy. Uh, as you know, we are uh, in, in this quarter. We have had uh, an important peak of energy cost. We reached uh, 472 euro per megawatt compared to 70 of the previous financial year, and 208 euro per metro cube uh, compared to 17 of gas. Uh, first of all, it's very important to underline that uh, um, the European uh, government and also Italy are supporting us with uh, different uh, contribution. Only to give an idea, in Italy uh, we received uh, from the government uh, in this uh, period of time, in this quarter, more or less 25% of contribution. And this 25% uh, will grow uh, 40% in the month of October and November. In this moment, they define only the month of October and November. And uh, uh, we are discussing, uh, as usual, with uh, our customers in order to uh, find a solution uh, for the future. I'm very happy to inform you that starting from the 1st of October, we found an agreement with our major customer. And so it means uh, uh, that in the next quarter, uh, uh, the contribution from uh, the government and the contribution from the uh, customer will not cover 100% of the increase of uh, energy costs, but... Uh, we are pretty confident about an increase of our EBITDA. Uh, why we are not closing in a structural way this agreement with our customer only for one reason, because unfortunately in this moment in Europe, the policy of the uh, government of each country is different. For example, in France and Spain, they decide for a price cap for energy and gas. In Germany and Italy, unfortunately not. Germany officialized that they will put 200 billion of euros in order to support the consumer and also the companies, but it's not so clear as they will support uh, everybody. They will officialize this strategy at the end of November. In Italy, as I told you, they are supporting us, but in a temporary way, 
um, and they remove uh, time to time uh, the situation uh, month per month. And so uh, it's very difficult to find an agreement with the customer because everybody in the OEM are waiting an official position from the European Union. And so, uh, but uh, the situation will improve in the next month for sure. Speaking about the, the production, in this quarter, uh, the market closed with the registration, with the, uh, the registration were up by 0.4%, and so more or less online compared to the previous year. But as endurance, we performed very well. We increased uh, um, the turnover of 25.9% from 45.3 million of euro to 57 million of euro. And please consider that the positive uh, aspect is that the production uh, in the same period, the production of passenger car in Germany was up by 42%. And so it means that for sure they are increasing again the stock because they used the stock in the, in the previous quarter. But uh, apparently the volume for the next month are uh, positive compared to the previous year. Okay, that's good to hear. Now, just Massimo, just to summarize what you said, that you know the energy cost because of the government measures should be slightly better in Q3, and a large, you know, uh, large customers of ours they have agreed for a price increase from uh, Jan onwards. Is that understanding correct? Yes, so yes. Yes. They will support us in a, in a different way, considering the different customer in different country, but. Uh, uh, I'm uh, pretty optimistic to, to, um, to be able to uh, recover uh, an important part of this uh, increase of energy costs. Only to give an idea, in the last quarter, we have had an impact in our profit and loss of 1.9 million of euros. If I consider six months of this financial year, the total impact was 3.6 uh, million of euros. The bid uh, of this quarter would, would have been 16% without the energy cost, and uh, uh, the bid of the six months, 16.6% without energy cost. And so, in this moment, our profitability is more or less online compared to the previous year, but unfortunately, the only problem is the energy. Okay, perfect. Uh, thanks. Thanks. That's it from my side. All the best. I'll join back in queue. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of. Nitin Arora from Access Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, so, first, uh, if on the Maxwell Energy, if you can talk about the order book, because I think when we acquired 51%, I think that time the orders in the pipeline was about 150 crores. So, if you can throw some light, how much orders have increased, uh, you know, specifically because it's, a, it's, it's actually an electric uh, uh, order. Uh, rather than counting the alloy wheels for the electric uh, vehicle. So if you can throw some light on that and uh, uh, anything, if you can comment on the acquisition uh, price and then it should be done the 100%. Yes. Uh, so, so of course, uh, I mean, I will request Akhil Aryan to reply to this. So, so as of now, the orders are in, are in excess of rupees 105 crores. Because some of the orders of 150 included, I think, Hero Motor Corp also. But at the same time, there are leads of 125 crores being pursued. Plus, we've got another 70 crores or 700 million of order, like I said, for the BMS from Hero Electric two days ago, which have to add to the orders in hand of 105. So it becomes 175 crores or 1750 billion. And uh, what, what was your next question, which I request Akhil? I actually let, let, let Mr. Akhil Aryan further speak on this acquisition. So the acquisition cost we can explain. Would you like to explain? I'll request Mr. Satriji Dre, a director and group CEO, for to answer this. See, to answer your question on acquisition cost, uh, there's a stock exchange release which we've given post our results yesterday. It's uh, quite clearly mentioned there. We've purchased 51% of the company through primary issuance and secondary purchase for a consideration of 1350 million rupees, that is 135 crores. And with that, Maxwell become, became a subsidiary that happened on 1st July. So the results uh, are getting consolidated from 1st July 2022. The balance, 49% of Maxwell equity share capital will be purchased by Endurance in five tranches spread over next five financial years. And the consideration of each tranche will depend on Maxwell achieving certain financial targets as specified in the share purchase agreement. Uh, uh, thanks, for, thanks for that. My, uh, 
question was more that is there uh, i mean i read the press release my question was that in this next 5 years i was asking more of the benchmark so the question was more that when the let's say the electric market uh, uh, which is growing very fast in the last let's say one and a half years and last five months have been increasing uh, 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 quite uh, the growth has been higher also led by custer uh, uh, the order book seems uh, not increasing uh, you know here is a new launch but not uh, in the top five or the top six market share people in electric uh can you throw some light how uh, we are looking to increase this pie and i think some part would of the order was also overseas so anything on that that would be helpful that's my uh, question okay so what i gave give you was a total figure which is about 175 crores of of you know order wins uh, uh, including the the recent 70 crores of hero electric i can but i will request akil aryan to answer this because we are pursuing orders from every i think uh, company which matters in this space but let i think akil uh, throw some more light on that akil yeah can you guys hear me okay yes yes we can hear you all right so uh, yes like anurang mentioned uh, we already have about 175 crores uh, in our order book we have about another 125 crores in active uh, uh, lead pipeline our thought process behind the market is not short term right so we are not chasing the the last 3 months or last 6 months volumes we're looking at you know what are the what are the volume creators of 2025 or 2030 we have to identify the oems that are genuinely being serious about their um, their ev plans uh, and also the ones that are building robust products that will stand the test of time uh there is a lot of you know of course in the ev space with the numbers as well there has been a lot of noise and you know very little signal uh for us we have we have chosen you know in terms of business opportunities we either go after high volume or high margin business uh, and so in india uh, our goal has really been identifying especially with the new regulations coming in you've heard of the new ais 156 you've also seen you know the same two considerations the uh, the how the government is sort of evaluating improving safety and and so on in the battery space and the vehicle space we are now seeing how oems are responding to that which ones are actually taking the additional effort to gear up uh, and be uh, in alignment with these i would say uh, you know new regulations of course there are some oems that have been in the market right some with uh, i would say Chinese DNSs that now have to eventually, like I also mentioned in my last call, uh, that are now being forced, practically speaking, to localize that supply. And so we are seeing a lot more, uh, I would say, conversations that are happening in our lead pipeline uh, where we are speaking to these OEMs. Uh, so those that transition from China to India is happening as we speak right now. And then there are also some OEMs that have, you know, traditionally built their own DNS that are in the market today, right? So. Uh, an example over there is Acer, right? So Acer has their own BMS and they're in the market. So even if their volume, so let's say in the last three months have gone up, uh, there is not really uh, a space for us to sell to them. However, apart from them, all of the other, I would say, major OEMs that are coming into the market, including Hero, right? So, so Hero is basically the Acer, uh, you know, company. So it's like Acer is owned by Hero to some extent. but uh, hero motor corp is you know is a significant customer for us and not just hero motor corp many other customers in india uh, as well as in europe are choosing to buy this uh, from technology experts like us so what i'd like to say over here is primarily that our focus is not necessarily on chasing short term trends of 3 months or 6 months who's selling more volumes right now by lowering their cost or or doing something else we want to focus on Uh, volume creators of 2025 so we are spending time integrating our technology and uh, you know integrating our pms into the battery pack designs of those oems both in india as well as uh, in europe um and there is there is a vast i would say um set of conversations that we are having over and above the orders that we already have in the pipeline that will help us gear up for the next fy and the fy after that in order to really ramp up as like you identified as the ev market starts increasing its pace and all of the serious oems step in you want to be part of the journey moving forward um 
Thanks. Thank you for that. I'll, I'll come back in the queue. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Ronak Sarda from Systematics Group. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, the first question, um, uh, sir, on the standalone operations, uh, the quarter on quarter, and even if I look at the YY growth, looks pretty strong uh, despite, you know, Bajaj facing a lot of issues on their export market. So I'm assuming production would have got curtailed there. So if you can help us understand, you know, uh, what has driven this strong growth, uh, also how is the product mix, and uh, in, in conjunction to that, you know, how has been the ABS, uh, 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 ABS revenues, you know, seeing uh, the scale up uh, over the last, you know, few quarters? Yes, yes. See, uh, what is? I think it's uh, see the see the business growth has 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 mainly happened because of our new order wins over the last, I would say, three years. Even during FI 21, I think we won 500 and. 65 or 585 crores of new business, 5,850 million. Last year we won 7,650 million, and so far, like I said, we've already won almost 7 billion worth of orders till date, and we're going strong. This doesn't include include the Hero Electric uh, 120 million, uh, I mean 120 crore business we won two days ago. So. I think it is, so the question is, you know, like I've always said on calls, I have no control on the outside uncertainties. We at Endurance are going after business, profitable business, and doing a lot of cost controls, whether it's, it's, whether it's consolidation, more, you know, operational efficiencies, helping in the product mix being better. And it's not about mm -hmm. casting or machining. Casting, we are trying to improve the profitability by going for machine casting, I've said. Alloy wheels is doing quite well. We're expanding alloy wheels, like I said. Gone to 380,000 alloy wheels a month from, you know, 240. Uh, brakes is growing very fast. We have a new plant for brakes, which has started. Got orders from EV companies also like Aether in a big way, actually. We're almost like a single source there. So, so the question is, we are driven. One focus is, of course, EV. And luckily, except for the clutch, all our products have said are EV, you know, agnostic. The castings being different types. But similar uh, machining centers, similar die casting machines, only you change the tooling for the die casting machines. That, so th that's a good part. You know, uh, we're also doing backward integration to improve profitability, like I said, steel braided hoses and aluminum forgings for our inverted front forks. You know, this has helped us to increase our margins because these are both import substitutes, you know. So we are doing, our strategy is of course outsourcing to our endurance vendor association is one hand, you know. So we're able to focus on more important or critical operations in house, you know, like surface treatments or, you know, you know the, uh, different type of assemblies. But at the same time, we're also doing backward integration, which gives us higher margins, you know. Also, the product mix. Fortunately, brake, suspension, alloy wheel, machine casting business is, is really growing. And, of course, uh, the advanced electronics with Maxwell and, uh, and as well as drive shaft is still at an initial, I would say, uh, I would say a beginner stage, a long way to go. We have very big plans for both these, you know, uh, also areas. Also, I mentioned about aluminium forging. It's not only about inverted front forks. We've got upper brackets for a conventional front fork from Hero Motocop. We're getting a lot of inquiries for other type of aluminium forgings. So I think it's a combination of product mix, technology products, focusing on upgrading products, technology products, you know, uh, you know, on, on one hand, you know, and, and for EVs, because EVs will grow for sure with, 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 with the push uh, which is happening on EVs, I'm sure it will grow, it will, it will grow very, very fast. So we want to be a part of that growth. That's why almost, you know, uh, you know, uh, this thing, 600 crores of business, you know, one already, and we are going, you know, strong on this business. And of course, the cost controls, like I mentioned, whether it's consolidation of plants, operation efficiency, the, 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 the purchasing is better. Like, like if you see quarter one and quarter two, the RMC percentage of sale in quarter one was 67.6 percent. Quarter two is 67.2, so so it's only gone down by 0.4 percent, but the EBITDA margin has gone up by 1.4 percent, so extra one percent I would say. So this is the kind of focus we have on product mix and cost controls, you know. And this is something we'll continue to do. The quarter three we're expecting a huge drop in you know raw raw metal prices because. Steel, like aluminium, is almost, I think, 51% or 52% of our purchases. Another 32% is steel. Different types of steels are there, you know. 
different grades of steel. Both these are going to further go, 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 go down substantially in this quarter. That, of course, helps with the EBITDA margins. Because your raw material percentage of sales, the moment it goes down, it has a direct impact on your EBITDA margin, that the percentage. So, so, of course, we are very optimistic. I mean, and I'll be very honest that looking at the way we are getting business and we are focusing on the efficiencies and uh, as well as, you know, the, the product mix getting better, more technology products, and the most heartening note is overseas with the energy prices now being addressed by the major OEMs. You know, and I think the future, I mean, we are very, very optimistic on the future. And I'm just not saying it just because you are, you know, this thing, because I only say what I mean. You know, so I'm seeing, you know, after a year, a lot of things which are positive in Europe, especially because energy really, really, you know, 18%, 19% EBITDA margin company has come down, you know, so heavily. To you know, 11.7, 11.8% is crazy. You can imagine what impact it, it, it has done for us. And many companies are not even, I think, they are, they are in a bad shape in Europe. But they, that has given us an opportunity to, to, to get new orders. And that's why such big business wins from Daimler, Stellantis, Volkswagen Group, including Porsche. So I just want to say that I think it's been a combination of sales growth, better product mix, and cost controls, you know, and purchasing being better. Sure. So thanks for that. Uh, that's a really detailed explanation. Uh, so uh, two more questions. One for uh, Mr. Aryan. Uh, if he can help us understand how the two new norms on the uh, battery side on electric vehicles, the first coming on December 1st and then on 31st March, uh, uh, how, do, how does that change the entire supply chain for BMS and what could be the uh, kind of cost increase which, uh, which, an, which a vehicle would see? That's one. And second for Mr. Ray, uh, so the way we calculate the subsidiary performance is, you know, directly console minus standalone. Uh, now with Maxwell getting consolidated as well, uh, if you can help us understand, you know, what kind of uh, revenue and cost are sitting uh, in the in the overall subsidy numbers, uh, so that we can decipher the you know Europe performance separately. So that would be really helpful. So I guess the first. Uh, it's for me. See, yeah. actually, we are very happy with the with the new norms. To be honest, uh, because many of our products, practically all of our uh, you know BMS products, incidentally, you know, from the start when we when we made the design, we wanted mm -hmm. to take extra precautions more than were mandated by law, at least in India, because we were selling internationally, right? So. Uh, when you want to supply to Europe, the US, uh, you know, we were already designing uh, for global standards. And so, mm -hmm. as it stands today, many of our products, by default, uh, comply with the new norms that have been uh, announced by the India government, uh, or this AIS 156. There are some small, I would say, very unique things that have been also announced in phase two of AIS 156. And for that, some minor adjustments that need to be made for some of our products are being made as of right now, as, it, as we speak. Uh, but again, fortunately, a lot of this, you know, because we have designed the technology as a platform and not as a product, uh, it means that for us, we will not have to do uh, fully new hardware design cycles. We are simply just implementing new firmware upgrades uh, to our product, which will enable us to have, again, a compliant PMS. Again, like I said, most of them are already compliant for both, uh, both phases. Uh, for the other products, where minor tweaks are required, they're estimating to be done uh, before December, even before phase one. Um, coming to um, new product designs, I think what's interesting uh, specifically uh, with these with these norms is that a lot of the guys who were buying, you know, PCMs, which are protection circuits from China, as a as a drop in instead of a BMS. Um, those guys uh, are now realizing that, look, this is no longer going to work because, you know, the problem with, I'm not just saying this about China, but we are, in reality, when you're buying a PCM instead of a BMS, the problem is that there is no firmware because there is no microcontrollers, right? So you are basically in a place where you have a black box hardware that you just connect and it does, uh, it acts like a fuse, right? You know, if, if, if something goes above a certain threshold, it just stops the battery from working. So there is no way to, I would say tune it or write some firmware to make it meet or comply with the standards. So it's almost as if, uh, you know, they have to find a, a BMS supplier instead of protection circuit. 
that increases the the TAM, the addressable market for us in general significantly. And we knew the, at some point this was going to happen. And in the last two quarterly calls, I've mentioned this. That frame two was just uh, one step in that direction. You know, AIS of course helps the adoption of reliable battery management technology because batteries are safety critical. Uh, instead of just having a you know performance link, you also have to have a sort of safety angle when you're designing products. Uh, last but not the least, I also want to highlight that uh, not only is this sort of requiring a lot of these uh, OEMs to to source BMSs instead of PCMs, because of the same two subsidies, they are also trying to source this BMS locally, right? Which means that they have to source it from India. And in India, when it comes to an AIS compliant BMS, which is cost competitive because we have the the volume threshold, we are definitely market leaders uh, in that regard. And so we are seeing a lot more conversations uh, happening because many of our competitors do not meet the standard. Some that meet the standard don't have the, the experience of uh, delivering products for the Indian market. And some of the others that have that experience also will not be as cost competitive. So I think that overall, while the while the overall cost impact for companies that were using PCMs will be there, you know, because they will have to move from PCMs to BMS, so maybe there will be an increase in cost for their for their vehicle. But in the context of us as a as a supplier of technology and BMS, uh, I think that it it has radically expanded the addressable market for our technology. And like I said, our BMS is already compliant phase one and phase two. You got it. No, thanks. Okay, uh, Ronak, to un uh, answer the second part of your question, I'll give you numbers for Europe and Maxwell separately because standalone numbers you already have. Yeah. As far as Europe goes, I'll give you numbers in Euro. Quarter two had a total income of 57 million Euro and an EBITDA of 6.6 .6 million Euro. Compared to last year, 45.3 million Euro and 6.3 million euro of EBITDA. Now you must remember that quarter two to quarter two, there's been an 8% uh, uh, depreciation of euro against rupee. So as far as rupee value is concerned, it will be lower. Now, uh, as far as Maxwell is concerned, the total income in this quarter is 40 million or four crores. At EBITDA level, there's a loss of 61.1 61.5 million rupees or 6.15 crores. This is primarily driven by the fact that we considered employee cost build up, but uh, a very major order started fructifying later. So, so there's a timing mismatch between revenue and cost. So that's why uh, this kind of loss has come on such a low value of sales. And the last point from my side is that a straight arithmetical aggregation will not get you the numbers because between India and Europe, there are transactions, so there would be consolidation adjustments there. You got it. You got it. Right, no, that's really helpful. So Europe was not as uh, weak as you know uh, the overall numbers seem to be. No, that that's really helpful. Thank you. And all the very best. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management will be able to answer questions from all participants, please limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, please rejoin the queue. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Sunal Gupta from LNT Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. <clears throat> hi, good morning and thanks for taking my question. Uh, so just on, uh, sir, like you mentioned, uh, one, sorry, uh, bookkeeping question. Uh, in the other operating income, is there any Maharashtra subsidy this quarter and last quarter? Any numbers? Oh, uh, I mean, are you looking at the stock exchange publication? Yeah, yeah. The Maharashtra subsidy uh, that uh, thing goes in uh, revenue from operations. It doesn't go in other income. Right, right, right. No, no, but I'm just trying to understand in revenue from operation, is there any number there? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Of course. Uh, can you highlight the amount? Just what? Okay. Uh, are you talking about quarter two or half one? Which number do you want? Uh, I, I wanted both numbers if possible. But, okay. Uh, I, Quarter two, quarter two, 22, 23, the booking has been 284.61 million, which was covered by Mr. Jen in his uh, opening remarks. And uh, in quarter one, 
the booking was 300.95. So uh, half one total booking is 585.56 minutes. Got it. And uh, sir, uh, in in your uh, comments. Uh, Previously, uh, Mr. Jain, uh, so you mentioned about the raw material costs going down. I mean, right right now, I mean, if you look at the strong growth that we've seen on a year-on-year -year basis on the revenues, uh, how much of that is because of uh, of the commodity prices going up, and how much do you ex expect to reverse in the coming quarters? See, I mean, like I said, quarter one, the RMC percent. I'm talking about standalone India right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The RMC percentage was 67.6, you know, the quarter one, so the percentage to sale, which went down by 0.4% to 67.2, 0.4%. Uh, EBITDA went up from 11% in quarter one to 12.4% in India, which means we made a 1% because of sales growth, maybe better economies of scale, and uh, and uh, also, you know, cost cost controls. And the product mix being a bit better with ABS is going up, with inverted fun forks going up, uh, you know, aluminium forging starting as an import, you know, substitute. So, uh, but I think operational efficiency also helps. So we have get got an extra 1% EBITDA, which is only because of efficiency mainly and product mix. And of course, here's growth. Got no, no. What I was trying to ask is like on the top line. Uh, I mean, like uh, if we see like say this quarter versus next quarter, or given that you're saying that you're expecting sharp drop in aluminium, etc. How much deflation of top line do you see because of that? Very difficult. You know, customers change their schedules every month. You know, you know that the question is very difficult to say. That's why I've always said since the IPO, higher in industry growth and profitable growth, which we will retain. There's too many uncertainties out there, you know, so we can only do our best, but yes, but to answer your question, commodity prices, when they go down, we are looking at like the alloy wheel, you know, alloy, some of the alloy, you know, high-end alloys, there'll be a sharp drop there, you know, uh, could be about 12, 12%, 13% drop in, in private. This is very good for us, but that's a large, because that's also a, a good 30, 40% part of the total aluminum alloy purchases we do. Steel is going down. I was told about six or eight rupees a kg on the average. So all these are good signs because see, once the RMC personal steel goes down, your beta margin percentage directly will go up. So that part so we are sure of, a commodity price is coming down. But what, as far as sales are concerned, as far as we are concerned, we, we are going for growth. But how much growth, I can't tell you. I just can't tell you. I can only tell you all the business wins we have done and many of these businesses have started. But very difficult, you know, to, to talk about the future as far as, far as uh, what that sales can be, the guidance can be. I really don't know. Like, we, like in spite of falling prices of commodities, we have a 26 we grew, uh, you know, in, in a big win quarter two versus quarter two. Because quarter two of FY22 was not that bad. Like quarter one, when we were hit by Delta, quarter two was quite okay, you know. Still we have grown. Because this is also because of new business wins in the last three years. Got it. No, so that is what I was trying to understand, right? Like on a sequ on a year, if it is easier, right? Like on a year-on-year -year basis, how much of the revenue growth you've seen is because of commodity prices? Acha, because of commodity. Okay, now in uh, in 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 this year mainly, I would say the first four months. Uh, I don't know what that percentage we had given in quarter one. In half one, it has been about uh, two seventy crores, roughly. Half one, half so half one, half one. I would say if you take a total sales, our the first half was how much? Our it, revenue from operations in half one, if I disregard the incentive and the... It's 3,000. ...was about 870 crore growth in sales. Of that, I'm rounding off the numbers, of that about 270 crores came from... Uh, commodity. So have you got an answer? 270 out of 850? 870. Uh, out of 870 is coming because of raw material. The first six months, sir. Yeah. Got it, sir. Great. Thank you so much. This is very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. But you must understand these are estimated numbers. These are estimated numbers because there is a lot of indirect inflation in the components we purchase, which is very difficult to sort of put our fingers on. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Jinesh Gandhi from Motilal Oswal Financial Services. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thanks for taking my question. First is, uh, how are you seeing the order book are developing or production schedules developing post festive season on the cooler side in India? 
No, I think this month is absolutely all right. I mean, we, we don't see it now. Next month, we have to wait and see schedules we get in the last week of this month. But, but this month, and see, I think in our cases also because of, you know, business wins, like I said, last three years, which are all coming up. They may be a bit late, but they all, they've all started coming up. So I would say in, I will not, I can't tell you the, the number, but, but, uh, but it's not going down for sure. Okay, so we said uh, September, October, it is uh, fairly comfortable except for the seasonality part of it, except for the festive season part of it. Good. Uh, secondly, uh, secondly, with respect to uh, the ABS business which we have from Bajaj and RE, uh, yeah. can you indicate what kind of uh, share of wallet we have for them for ABS? See, with, uh, with, with Bajaj, we would be at about what? About. Uh, we are doing a single channel right now, channel. so we are doing about how much for them? 17, 18,000? 18, 18, 18, 18 to 20,000 for Bajaj yeah. and about 8 to 10,000, 8, 8,000. Say so about 8,000 for Royal but, but 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 they want more. I mean, the question is, is it, it more depends on us, you know. But, but our capacity is 33,000 a month, which keeps going slightly up and down because of the volumes of these high-end vehicles slightly, you know. But uh, I would say 20 to 30 is something which we are, you know, now uh, doing. And we should do the full 33 from January for sure. Because, because, because next month is normally a dip because you know, most customers are closed last four or five days or a week, you know, uh, for their maintenance activities. It is, and they have their block holidays. But uh, shortly from January, we'll reach the peak. And like I said, now our dual channel ABS is also the process of getting clearance. So that we are adding another 200,000 to the 400,000. So we have a capacity of 600,000 in, in a market size of, I think, three to three and a half million. You know, of, you know, EBS requirements above 125 CC vehicles. Got it, got it. And uh, uh, second question is to uh, uh, Maximo. So firstly, on uh, 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 the outperformance which we have seen in Europe market, uh, where we have grown at about 26% as against uh, uh, just about 0.2% growth, or even if I look at adjusted growth of 19%, uh, what has led to that kind of a strong uh, outperformance in the Euro European market for us? So, uh, um, please, I, I told you that uh, in the month, in the, the previous quarter, even if uh, the registration uh, were up only 0.4%, there was an increase uh, in the production car in Germany of 42%. And so, from my point of view, they are uh, increasing uh, the stock due to the fact that, uh, first of all, if you compare this quarter compared to the previous uh, of the last year, you have to consider that the last quarter, the second quarter of 2024-2022, when uh, lack of semiconductor impacted uh, uh, in an important way. And so, uh, in this moment, uh, from my point of view, they are, the market is recovering, but uh, only for the premium car, because uh, continues to be a critical uh, situation for the semiconductor, and all the OEM are using the semiconductor, the fuel semiconductor, only for the premium car. In fact, if you analyze the profitability of everybody, the OEM in Europe, even if they are doing important reduction of volume compared to the previous year, they are increasing the turnover and also the profitability. And so the situation of the market, is, we are not in the, in the normality because we continue to have a problem in terms of uh, semiconductor and also, let me say, please consider that in this moment we have more or less 10, 11 percent of inflation. And so also the demand is very weak. But from our side, from uh, endurance, I'm pretty optimistic for the, the future uh, six months, uh, only for one reason, because we are entering production with uh, several new products for the electric component. And please consider that in the previous quarter, the BEV, the pure electric vehicle, reached a market share, or a market share of 11.9%, 22% more compared to the previous quarter. The, in the past, the, the uh, plug-in hybrid technology reached 8.5%. So the situation is uh, unbelievable because in Europe, in this moment, 20% of the market is completely electric. And so, uh, as you know, as Endurance, we started uh, in 2015 with this uh, uh, technology, and in this moment, we are uh, having a benefit in our product mix. And also for the future months, I believe the situation will be the same because for specific products as, uh, for example, Porsche and also Adi, we are working six days per week. 
got it. And would it be fair to say from CQ onwards, we'll see benefit of... Mr. Gandhi, may we request you to please rejoin the queue. There are several sure. other participants who are waiting for their turn. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Pramod Amte from Incred Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for taking the question. Uh, first one with regard to the uh, considering that you are increasing the ABS production and also Maxwell seems to be gaining uh, orders. Uh, how do you see your import contents going up in the coming years? Uh, first and second, with relate to the same is uh, to neutralize that. Would you be looking at more export opportunities in the coming years so that you can balance it out in a better way? Yeah, see, I, I will talk about the ABS, and then I think for uh, for the BMS can be answered by, by you know, Akhil Aryan. As far as ABS is concerned, uh, one, I think, import substitute, which we have done is by by setting up a facility in-house for valve manufacturing, valve manufacturing, which is going to be a very good saving for us and very profitable. But what will continue to be, but we're not importing, I think, the ECU, right? That is coming from Mandohela in Chennai. Uh, Chennai. Chennai. So actually, for ABS, we will not have much of an impact, uh, if you ask me, in terms of imports, uh, uh, because uh, Mandohela is supplying us the ABS ECU from their plant in Chennai. And we have, and uh, I think from next month, or from I think from this month end, we are starting the valve manufacturing in-house, which, which is a technology by itself, where we will not only it will be an import substitute, but at the same time, we will save... We will we'll save on, I mean, we'll, we'll increase our margin because of this. And we'll be pretty, pretty good uh, margin. So, so we don't see an issue on ABS as far as imports are concerned. Because, because we like to be self-sufficient as soon as possible, you know. When we start some of these high-end products, so we like to do it in-house. That's why I talked about aluminum forging and steel braid hoses in the past. Uh, so, so ABS, I don't see an issue. Uh, but as far as... Uh, uh, BMS is concerned, I think uh, I will request Akhil to answer that. Yeah. So, look on uh, when you get into the domain of uh, designing and manufacturing advanced electronics, like Maxwell is, uh, you know, unfortunately, the reality today is that there are not many global semiconductor companies who have set up shop in India. I think India is uh, is actively now as a country trying to overcome this. Uh, of course, that's a bigger discussion. But um, in the context of uh, the BMS product, we will have to continue importing the semiconductor components, right? So your controllers and all. There are of course active as well as passive components. Some passive components can be sourced locally, but a lot of the active components, uh, if we want to build world-class products then more often than not, we have to rely on, uh, you know, international semiconductor suppliers, like say, a Texas Instruments, a microchip, NXP, uh, and so on. And most of them don't have any presence in India. So we will have to continue importing that. Um, they are, I think that they are, they had, of course, initially set up shops in multiple places around the world. But they are also de-risking themselves after the whole, uh, you know, China scenario as well as COVID piece happened. They set up new plants in and around uh, not only India, but also de-risk themselves outside of China. Uh, but anyway, to answer the question in short form, I would say that we will, uh, we as in, uh, you know, as, as we start setting up a manufacturing plant inside of Endurance for manufacturing and assembling our own electronics, um, you know, Endurance will most certainly be placing orders uh, on Maxwell's behalf to import some of these components. Um, and as the volumes for Maxwell pick up, unless there are, uh, you know, ways in which India as a country overcomes the semiconductor uh, dependence on other countries and these uh, large semiconductor companies set up shop in India, I would say for the foreseeable future, at least for the, the raw material of semiconductors, not the PCB or the assembly, we will have to depend on that. And so import will continue. However, uh, I think from a strategy standpoint, we are very aggressively looking at the international growth because, like I said, uh, for us, we focus on either high volume business in India or high margin business in Europe uh, and also in uh, the U.S., 
So we have now created a dedicated team that is dedicated, like a small team. Of course, we're a smaller company, so we have a small dedicated team that is focusing on winning business in Europe. Um, and you know, we are focusing not only on the on the two wheeler market there, but really also looking at industrial equipment like forklifts, excavators, uh, and so on, because a lot of those uh, industrial equipments are going from diesel to electric in Europe as we speak right now. And uh, related to that, Excel was the uh, you you address for uh, your own Excel for export opportunity. Wanted to check with Anurag uh, on the broader theme of Euro Plus One. Uh, how are you looking at the power crisis uh, giving you any opportunity to uh, build your export business from India for metal forming as um, in the medium term? Any thoughts on that? Yeah. yeah. See, our strategy right from when we did the acquisitions in 2006 is that we don't want to try and you know substitute be a substitute for the our business in europe we want europe to grow i was so happy they have grown 25 percent this quarter uh, but uh, we don't want to come in their way our exports have been on our own through certain companies like get track for example port get track we've been supplying to them for many years uh, of course, this year they've been down. Even last year they were a bit down, but we're getting new business from them. So we have our own exports to Europe, but we don't. Uh, our strategy is very clear. We don't want to come in the way of our European operations to try and take their business or try and take their customers unless we both agree that it makes sense. It should not go to a third party, and then we take business. You know, it's fine. But even if you see the sea trade was so high, now it's coming down. It was not viable to export. If you see, you know, in the last one year, the sea freight just doubled or maybe it was more. It didn't make sense. So people were not even looking at India, to be honest. But yes, uh, to answer your question, uh, we, have, we, have, we have enough business opportunities here. You know, in fact, we are, like I said in the last call, last quarter call, we have got a good business from San Mina, which is a JV with, uh, you know, Geo, uh, you know, for the castings required for their sales tax. We got a good order from Genrac for the gen sets for exports to the U.S. So we are, I mean, we are, we are, we are, we are enough profitable business here to deal with. So we have to come in the way of our European operation. So that is our strategy for the future. Sure. Thanks in all of this. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Arvind Sharma from Citigroup. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hello. Good afternoon, sir, and uh, thank you for taking my question. Hi. Uh, Mr. Sharma, yeah. your voice is breaking. I would request you to use your handset or come in the network area, please. Sure. Can, can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Now, now we can hear you. Indeed, sir. Good afternoon, sir, and thank you for taking my question. Good afternoon. Uh, sir, two questions. Uh, first, on the domestic side of the India business, can you uh, please uh, give some details on the dry shaft business? What's the current revenue and what are the revenue opportunities there? Uh, that's the first question, and second question is asked after this on the European business. Sorry, uh, no, okay, no, no, okay. Second question was sorry, I didn't hear the second one clearly. Uh, sir, I asked. Uh, okay, I asked uh, right now uh, on the European business. What is what was the path for uh, this quarter, and uh, uh, how do you think that the energy prices would perform over? You give some idea, but uh, over second half. Uh, how much can be the expected decline or easing out of the energy prices? So those two questions. Uh, Arvind, the PAT in Europe for quarter two was uh, 1.7 million euro. On, on the energy uh, cost, Mr. Venuti has explained in detail. So I'm again requesting uh, Mr. Venuti to explain in a nutshell what he explained about the energy cost, how we see it panning out. Sure. So, so would Marcelo answer that? Yes. Marcelo, you yes. can just answer that again. For sure. So, uh, uh, as I told you before, in the second quarter of this financial year, we have had uh, a price of energy of 472 euro per megawatt and 208 euro of the gas. In this moment, the future for the Q3 uh, showed to us 300 for the energy and 120 for the gas. And so the situation is improving in this moment in terms of price. But in this moment, it's not possible, uh, as you can imagine, to fix the price. And so 
uh, we are living day by day, but uh, in this moment, uh, the, the price go is going down compared to the previous quarter. For this reason, we are uh, optimists due to the fact that, first of all, there is a reduction, and second, we are receiving uh, incentive uh, uh, support from our customers and also from the government. From my point of view, uh, as I told you before, in the next quarter, the profitability of endurance overseas will grow compared to the previous year. Thank you, sir. And uh, on the India drive shop business, sir, uh, the revenue yeah, possibility. So, on, see, see. Uh, yeah. so on the drive shop business, uh, I'm just checking, I'm just told somebody to check the figures. Because we already started with Bajaj and Mahindra. Uh, TBS, we are starting, you know, in the first quarter of next financial year. I would not like to give you any, you know, wrong figure, but I will. Let, 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 let's see if I can get back to you during this call, you know, itself. Sure, what sir. Thank you so much. Business win and and what is the sales figure we are, I mean, expecting to do? Sure, sir. Thank you so much. Because we started this in July, it's, you know, of this year. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Ashutosh Tiwari from Equilibrium Securities. Please go ahead. Mr. Tiwari, I have unmuted your line. Kindly proceed with your question. As a current. Mr. Tiwari? Are you audible? Yes, please. Yes, yes. Now we can hear you. Sorry. Uh, so, firstly, on the margin side, uh, you mentioned that uh, uh, next quarter, the, the wrong price should come down, mainly aluminium and steel, also partly. So, so will it lead to margin expansion or already, like since the second quarter, we have got the pass through and all, or some pass through is remaining with the customers? No, and normally we do get the pass through, but I would not say it is, you know, this thing 100%, you know, but uh, because they don't address, see, different customers, see, aluminum steel, everybody will address. But there are so many other components like rubber and, you know, there are centered items, there are, you know, bearings. So, so everything will not get addressed. But I would say almost 90% does get addressed, you know, and, and it's all customer to customer. But that is something which we have been used to for since the beginning. So it's not something which is new, which is there. But to answer your question, largely it is addressed quarter to quarter. Only the amendments, some of them come early, some of them come later. But the amendments do come. So so by, so you mean to say that by, like say that, from third quarter margin should improve uh, from two few levels. Yeah, yeah, that's a focus to keep improving the margins. No, so I'm asking this question because if you look at, I mean, our revenue versus pre-COVID has gone up here, of probably operating at the highest revenue on a quarterly basis. But our margins are significantly below what they, we used to do earlier. It's standalone I'm talking about. So can that normalize and, and generally what did the target range we are looking at, uh, say, over the next one or two years? See, when we had margins of 14.5%, 15 15%, that time the RMC percentage was 62 to 63 yeah, percent. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right now, this last quarter, which is July to October, we were at 67.2 percent and 67.6 percent in the first quarter. So, as these raw material percentages go down, it'll have a direct imp upward impact on the beta margins. You know the percentages. So you will see that improving. You know, and definitely the trend is downwards now, for sure. And that, and that that is clear from 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 all commodity because we also buying it you know for our supply so 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 it's for sure so so this will of course positively impact the I mean the bit margin percentage as raw material goes down the commodities go down and uh, secondly on this uh, aftermarket sales while there's a growth in the first half uh, versus last year but there's a small decline of five percent if I look at the second quarter. So how should we look at uh, this aftermarket sales going here? Because even the base in the second half of this year is really, uh, for last year is actually higher. So how should we look at aftermarket overall for the full year perspective? This is mainly because of exports. One is to Sri Sri Lanka, which was a, a good country for us, you know, for exports. You know, and uh, so that was one. And, and, and Bangladesh and third is Egypt. So we were impacted in these three areas. But what we have done is, that our aftermarket is uh, going through this merchant export route with, you know, with these people who are in India. Because, see, we cannot risk the payment, the payments, you know, because that we are, we cannot have any outstanding, you know, debts and stuff like that. So, uh, so of course, it, it, there has been a financial crisis, you know, in Sri Lanka, which is a good country for our, 
you know, for aftermarket products, Bangladesh and Egypt. Egypt, we are seeing signs of improvement. But what we have done is we are going through uh, this merchant export route. So that de decline you see is mainly mainly because of exports. Okay. So remarks. We are adding four new countries now in the next few months also. So, but but overall there will be a growth. This quarter two is only because of this reason. Do you see a good growth in uh, aftermarket? Okay, so I mean maybe the issue this year may not be very high growth. So next year uh, we can expect uh, growth to again pick up, right? Yes, yes, for sure, for sure. See, see, that's why you know there are, like I said, there are external factors which are not in our control. Uh, so Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, and, and Egypt is one of those factors. But let me tell you, uh, as far as the profitability is concerned, there is no compromise, and getting our payments on time. That is something which is not going to be impacted. Okay. And lastly, on the ABS side, uh, how much revenue we would have done in the first half or maybe a broad range for full year? Normally, I don't give individual product-wise revenue. So, I told you the volumes, no? We have now reached 28 to 30,000. We will do 33,000 from Jan because next month we should see a dip because we block closures, like I said. And we are adding another 200,000 ABSs for dual channel. Also, you know, so... But you know, I can't give you individual. I, I we have not been saying that. You know, uh, we don't declare okay. product wise. The two hundred k capacity will come up in Q4. The two hundred thousand capacity of dual channel. I think will start from Q1. I isn't it? It will start from Q1 because the lead time is there. There is some important machineries here. Yeah. Okay. So it will be more up towards end of Q1 because the imported uh, machineries will take six months, you know, to come. So we have placed the order. And 1.2 million, you said, they will come up by uh, second half? of 2024, second half. Calendar year. Calendar year or financial year? It will be in the second half financial year. Okay, so by March 24. So sorry, so it will be more towards the third quarter of 2024. I mean, when I say third quarter, uh, means of, okay, or, or it will be the fourth quarter of calendar year, if you say 2024. Fourth quarter of this is December 2024. Yeah, calendar year. Yeah, okay. okay, fine. Thank you. That's all from the side. Thanks. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Aman Agrawal from Carnelian Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, sir. And thank you for the opportunity. So I had two questions. Uh, first of them are incremental capital allocation. So uh, in past, we have allocated the capital uh, very wisely, and that has led to sales, sales growth and profit growth for us. So going forward, sir, uh, which area are we looking to uh, allocate more capital? Will it be more towards agnostic products like drive shafts and all? Will it be towards EV-related products like BMS and all? Or will we be focusing more on uh, gaining in the PV opportunities, or like increasing the PV share? In our so, so, so it's a combination of, you know, everything. I think drive shop, we have enough of capacity, but see, that's still a smaller business right now. It's not, uh, you know, uh, in, in fact, such a large business. And that CAPEX we have already done. So I don't see there's much of CAPEX there going at all. The focus, of course, will be on, you know, on the high-end suspension, on the brakes business, on the machine casting business, also for four-wheelers, adding more and more machining, fully machined in, in castings. EV, of course, will be a major focus for us, but that's a part of the suspension brakes and casting business. We'll, of course, be investing in our own uh, assembly lines for the BMS. We hope to start in the first quarter of next financial year. Target is April now, 23, which will help us really improve our margins also on the BMS rather than buying from outside. The strategy, you know, we have followed for 10, 12 years. So critical operations we like to do in-house, you know. So, so I think the major, see, we'll go for anything which is profitable growth. So all these all these, like I told you, I mean, whether suspension, brakes, machine castings, uh, backward integrations also, which are happening, you know, towards, you know, hoses and aluminum forgings, you will see more uh, uh, going. Uh, so, so I think, I think it, it will be in all, or in all areas where the business opportunities are coming for us. Uh, understood, sir. And my second question was on this new technology evolving in casting globally. Uh, called one die casting or integrated die casting, where some of the players like Tesla are basically using a large machinery to 
cast the uh, PV machine at once, like the overall structural body of PV at once. So, like uh, in terms of our European business, like do we see this as an opportunity, a threat, or uh, how do you see this uh, in terms of our European business? Yeah, I will. I will request Mr. Massimo Benuti to answer that. Massimo. Yes. Uh, so for sure, uh, the, the uh, new technology of the UK um, pressure detecting is uh, absolutely interesting for the production of uh, chassis. But uh, in this moment, uh, all the European OEM are investing in this technology, not the supplier, because uh, uh, it's not possible to move uh, to transport this uh, this part. And so this uh, will be a technology from the point of view that can uh, insource uh, the OEM. In this moment, uh, also speaking with uh, the supplier of this big. Uh, I prefer the testing machine. Only the big OEM are trying to implement this technology because, as you know, this technology is very well uh, known in, uh, in in China and also in US because of the technology of, of Tesla. But uh, I don't believe that this could be an opportunity for endurance in the in the short time. Understood, sir. Thank you and good luck, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question that the management could answer today. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. No, I don't have anything further to add. You know, I've mentioned in my opening remarks what I had to say. Only one thing I would like to say that uh, we are very, very positive about the future. Thank you. On behalf of Access Capital Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lights.